My name is Rin Rabaev and I and my colleague, Dr. Daria Vasutinsky, we will present our findings on a study and paleographic analysis of medieval Hebrew manuscripts. Uh, our research group is leaded by Professor Jihad El Sana from Ben Gurion University. The group consists of five mem members, Professor Jihad El Sana, Dr. Daria Vasutinsky Shapira, me, and two doctorate students, Birat Kurat Bakarat and Ahmed Trobi. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the problem is to automatically classify script types and subtypes in medieval Hebrew manuscripts. Uh, script type classification can uh, provide a clue when and where the document was written, and uh, this information is vital for damaged and uh, undated or incomplete documents. Also, an automatic classifier will help to classify large collections of documents or even classify big archives where there is no expert in Hebrew paleography or where we have a less accessible uh, archives. Uh, medieval Hebrew scripts can be classified into 15 classes. At the first level of hierarchy, we have a regional classification as according to the paleographic experts, um, script types evolved differently in different regions. So we have here Ashkenazi, Byzantine, Italian, Sephardi, Oriental, and Yemenite scripts. At the second level of hierarchy, each is type is um, divided into three subtypes, square, cursive, and semi-cursive. Um, there is 15 classes, not 18 classes, because uh, some scripts, uh, scripts don't, uh, don't have a cursive or semi-cursive version. So in total, we have 15 classes. So uh, we utilize the neural networks to learn to discriminate among different script types. Uh, so far, we have experimented with two different, different neural networks, a simple CNN uh, with three convolutional layers and the ResNet, which has much uh, sophisticated architecture. And um, the size of our training set was about a uh, half a million image patches and validations uh, set size is 70,000 image patches. And we got um, already quite encouraging results. The classification accuracy on validation set is 96% using simple CNN. Also, we, the results on simple CNN uh, were much better than the results on ResNet. And uh, just for illustration, uh, we, can, we can see here image patches. The first row below the patches is the output returned by classifier. Uh, the second row is the actual label. So we can see the leftmost one and rightmost one were correctly classified. The middle one was uh, misclassified as oriental semi-square, it's actually Italian semi-square. Okay, now I'm um, transferring the presentation to Dr. Wasutinsky. She will continue and tell you about our uh, collaboration experience and uh, summarize uh, conclusions and recommendations. Daria, I will, uh, yes. I will move it for you. Ah, you will click, okay, good. good. Yes. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, my, uh, my name is Daria, I'm a um, PhD in Jewish thought and uh, I joined the project uh, this uh, January. Uh, I wrote my PhD about uh, so-called Firkovich collections of Jewish uh, manuscripts, um, the biggest collection of Jewish manuscripts in the world, and I'm a Hebrew paleographer. I have some 15 years experience in Hebrew paleography, uh, which is considered not much in, in, in my field. Uh, so the experience is really exciting, I must say. 
and uh, we are advancing much faster than I um, could expect. But of course, because uh, we come from absolutely different um, uh, different backgrounds, uh, there were and there are some obstacles. And I wanted to talk about some of them. The main, the biggest obstacle is to find the second uh, uh, part, of the, sec uh, the uh, computer uh, people who would be interested in such uh, research because our digital humanities conferences are mostly tailored for those people who have some idea about they wa what they want to do in the digital humanities and they know that they need digital humanities and they know what tools they want to learn in digital humanities. The same goes for the workshops. Um, but when uh, one has just some idea and he do he's not even sure that what he needs uh, are computers to help him, here I cannot see any um, common platform where people could meet. Um, then of course, uh, the participants from the humanities side must learn the language, the computer language, which uh, for me looks like learning a foreign language a bit. Um, and uh, uh, it helps and it's essential to express oneself in a clear and efficient way. Okay. Um, of course, uh, the way we uh, write our papers and the way we uh, make our presentation uh, is often different. Uh, in the humanities, we would normally have uh, one or maximum two co-authors per paper. And um, in, in computer sciences, we mostly write as a big group. And I personally find the second approach much, much easier <laughs> to do. And of course, because neither part knows what exactly to expect from the second part and what exactly you can ask for and what you can demand, and we have constantly to reformulate and to adapt uh, our work as we go. From what I see now in our project, it's outstanding. The um, uh, advance we are making is very fast. It's very efficient. And I believe that uh, digital humanities are going to play an uh, increasing role in the humanities. And not only uh, in practical applications, the way I see it now, in most projects, but also in um, uh, more theoretical, uh, uh, trying to solve bigger theoretical um, humanities problems. Uh, the recommendations, speaking very, you know, scratching the surface, uh, the main recommendation, we need uh, some um, platform to meet when somebody from the humanities doesn't even know that he needs uh, computer people to help him. Um, there must be a place where he can um, get advice and uh, the vice, uh, vice versa. And uh, of course, what is really m missing, I believe, at least in Israel, are uh, university uh, high quality courses, but not uh, like um, a little uh, digital humanities workshops where we address some specific um, project or some specific program that we learn something like um, digital epigraphy. Uh, but uh, larger scale university courses, but adapted for, for students in, in the humanities to learn the language, to learn the approach, to learn the global, to, the, to learn the idea, and then to understand do you, do you need it or not, uh, and, and uh, what exactly you're looking for. That would be, thank you. Thank you.